Hi guys, my name is Marcel and today you're learning how to draw fights like a sir. I've made a video about drawing a manga page and you all commented that you absolutely wanted a second part. So today I'm showing you guys how to draw a fight scene, paneling, timing, perspective and so on. This video is packed. Just as a disclaimer, this video was so much work. I think this has to be one of the most elaborate tutorials I've animated so far. This took ages to make. I'm super proud of it, but I don't know when I'll make another part because I think I'll need a break after this one. However, if you guys still want another part about it, let me know what you still need help with and maybe I'll return someday with another video about making manga. If you want to get notified when I'm making another video, you can just activate the bell and now we can start with drawing fights. Let's go! You know, the big problem when planning out the fight scene is that most people approach it in a completely wrong way. Most people view a fight in a comic or manga as a series of images, because that's how you draw it. But I'd say that's the wrong approach. Instead of thinking of a series of images, try imagining your fight more like a movie. And you are the one who's holding the camera. You decide on what to focus on, from which angle you view the fight and so on. And in this video, I'll explain all of this to you in detail. And just like you would do with a movie, I'm drawing a storyboard in beforehand. And I'm doing that just like I showed you in my last video about drawing manga pages. Like I said, the key to all of this will be to view it more like a movie or a video and less like some sequence of images. And drawing a storyboard will be the first hurdle you have to overcome. It's your first test of how good you already are. Drawing a storyboard is about how good you can turn some boring sentence in an enticing sequence of drawings. And in case you already have some problems here, you can just look up actual movies and check out how filmmakers handled this. There are movies about every kinds of fights, doesn't matter if it's hand-to-hand -hand combat, fights with swords, guns and everything else. As a practice, you can just try to draw a storyboard to a movie that you think has cool action. That way you can always turn to your reference while practicing. And the next time you'll read a sentence like the one before, you already have some experience with drawing this. Any way you dice it, there is no way around this. It was the exact same thing for me. Doesn't matter if I was animating something or if I was drawing some manga pages. All of this needed storyboarding. Now, this was a nice warm up, but let's take a look at some actual fight scenes. Because while drawing a fight scene, there are roughly five things that you need to be at least aware of. Well then, let's take a closer look. The very first aspect of a scene will be timing. That's, in my opinion, one of the most important parts. I know, I said you needed to view this like a movie, but for the sake of this argument, let's break down an action into its most basic components. That begs the question, when drawing an action, for example a simple punch, what part of this punch are you including in your scene? And there's a simple mnemonic device you need to keep in mind here, Anticipation and Aftermath. This is a trick animators use when they are displaying actions in their films. This law of anticipation and aftermath says that an action needs to be announced so that it has more weight. And also seeing the consequences of your action gives it more impact. So the actual action itself isn't really that important in the grander scheme of things. W what? Oh right, you don't believe me, huh? So, did you just see the actual punch? No, you didn't. But did it seem like it hurt? Hell yeah, it did. By not showing the punch itself, all of this feels a lot faster. And that's your goal here, surprising your viewer with a fast action. That way you are reading the scene and you yourself feel actually surprised along with the characters. So, draw actions like they just happened a split second ago if they are supposed to come quick. Don't draw them like they are happening right at this moment. And speaking of drawing something quick, Let's take a look at the topic of speed next. The easiest way of changing the speed in your scene is to change the amount of drawings in it. The more parts of an action you're depicting, the slower the action seems. Kinda like you're viewing the action through slow motion. 
And like you saw earlier, when you're drawing action that only consists of a very few panels, it feels a lot quicker. Of course, there are other ways of making an action feel fast, like drawing speed lines, for example. Or you could just draw some dynamic poses that feel like the character is in the process of moving. But I'd say timing is pretty much the most impactful thing here. But don't make the beginner mistake of drawing a fight that's just fast all the way through. You know how there are movies that have what feels like endless fight scenes, and after some time, these fight scenes kinda feel like they're dragging. To avoid this, always try slowing down the pace a bit. Show a close-up of your character, show how they look around or how they say something, just anything but constant fighting. You definitely want to avoid your readers skipping through all of your pages because the fight feels so long. And how do you lay out a fight like that? Yes, you might have guessed it, but you're doing that through paneling. I can confidently say that paneling is the most underrated thing in manga, because everyone always just pays attention to the art. Paneling and page composition is just like good voice acting. If it's really well done, you barely notice it, because it feels so natural. Your goal here is to guide your viewer's eye through your story, like an invisible tour guide. Take this fight as an example, Mihawk vs Zoro from One Piece. But I want to show you another iteration of it, because this scene has been redone by Boichi, artist from Dr. Stone. And Boichi changed the panel layout like this. Zoro! You immediately understand what happened, the panel has been laid out just like the action that's in it, so your eye can follow this invisible path. So, bottom line, your panels seem a lot more fluid and dynamic if they are centered around the action that's happening in them. And yes, you can let characters pop out of panels, but I would not recommend doing that very often. Because if you overdo it, you run the risk of your panels becoming cluttered and confusing. That's also one of the main reasons why I dropped the Platinum and Manga, because what, 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 how? What happened here? The older manga pages of this guy just screamed clean paneling, while the newer ones scream... Well, aneurysm. If you really want to see some clean composition, you can always turn to the Grandmaster, Akira Toriyama. He was one of the artists that revolutionized shonen manga back in the day. If you only see a manga page for a split second and you immediately know what's going on, that's some clean ass paneling. There are complete essays and articles that explain and exemplify how incredibly good this works. Despite it looking so simple, this is way harder than it looks, and Akira Toriyama is almost always there as the prime example. And that's why Dragon Ball Super will never surpass the original. Just saying. <laughs> saying. <laughs> Talking about orientation hits very close to home for me, because I struggled a lot at the very beginning with this. And that's why I wanted to show you how I tackled this problem. So, let's take a look in Myth Volume 2 that I drew back in 2016. Toby, my story writer, wanted this fight to take place in an alleyway that ends in a dead end. I like the gag that this was a setup for, but you can already tell what's the problem here. While reading the fight, you had problems telling what character stands where exactly. I kinda wanted to counter this by drawing different patterns on different walls, but this didn't really help that much. But then, a couple of years later... Wait... Couple of years? Bro, how old am I? What the fuck? Anyways, there was a rematch with Poseidon in a later volume, and for this fight, I came prepared. While writing the fight, I made changes to the environment. For example, Poseidon creates walls while fighting. So, based on this wall, the reader of this fight can always tell where a character is located. But I also tried to draw the background less monotonous, so there are things like for example, Poseidon's Mansion, that helps you orientate as well. So, bottom line, learn how to draw backgrounds. <laughs> yes, while drawing fight scenes, you need to draw fighting poses. Wow, that's genius. Oh. But how do poses in fights specifically look? I'm playing the broken record again, try referencing movies the best you can. In fights, people are mostly tense, and their pose often reflects that. I've already made tutorials on how to draw poses, in case you are interested in this topic. A really neat advice from this video is the practice of life drawing. With this practice, your poses will look a lot more natural. If you want to know more details about that, you can just check out my video about it. 
So, with that out of the way, let's take a look at the very last aspect, which is... Perspective. And while drawing perspective in a comic or manga, there is one crucial thing you have to watch out for. Call it a little trick, even maybe a secret, an insider info you might have not heard about until now. Imagine this, and you might be surprised when you hear this, so imagine your fight scene just like a movie. <laughs> okay, sorry, I just had to. But it's true though, I imagine your fight like an open room or a film set, and you choose where to place the camera, drawing the same angle over and over and over again is such a beginner's mistake when drawing a scene. No cameraman out there just stands there and records the same perspective for an hour. This doesn't feel like a high quality Hollywood movie, but more like amateur porn. Just watch out how many times the camera perspective changes every couple of seconds. Kinda insane when you really think about it. I mean, isn't this cameraman scared for his life when filming a scene like this? Watch out the sword! There are a lot of shot angles that are being used when making a movie, and you can just use this reference sheet as an inspiration when you feel like you need to spice up your fight a bit. And yes, perspective also helps to convey depth. Let's take One Piece as an example again, because the original author also has a very good feeling when it comes to drawing fight scenes. And yeah, I know, some of you out there are still struggling a lot with drawing extreme perspective. I'm aware of that, I'm not a complete idiot or something. What? I'm not an idiot, I know that most of you aren't drawing extreme perspective, not because you don't like it, but rather because you can't draw it. But at this point, you have two options. Either you keep on drawing scenes with amateur porn-esque perspective, or you buckle down and practice drawing perspective. In case you still need some help with that, I've made videos about drawing perspective or how to foreshorten your drawings, maybe this could help you out. And while we're at the topic, you can check out my other tutorials about drawing humans, hands or anything else you still struggle with as well. This video was part 2 of how to draw manga. If you still want another part, just let me know. I still have a lot more ideas up my sleeve, like a detailed video on paneling your manga, for example. As you might have seen, this video has to be one of my most time-consuming tutorials yet. This video took ages to make and I would appreciate if you support my work. You don't have to give me money via Patreon. Even though you can. Just liking the video and leaving a nice comment goes a long way. No money involved. I'll continue making my videos about manga if you guys are up for it. Just remember to activate notifications so that you won't miss when I upload my next video. And in case you are interested in the manga series that I drew, you can go ahead and check it out on my website. I've also animated some trailers for it and more stuff. You can read all about it on my homepage that you can see on screen right now. Thanks a lot for watching you guys, my name's been Marcel and I see you guys in my next video, goodbye.